She, so DC guys was telling him that she's a hood rat. Kirk Bone and the whole Langston, North Langston turf was telling them, man, don't fuck with her like that. You gonna fuck her, fuck. Uh, so I'll pull out his wife and thoughts. Kirk came up to me and was like, hold up, man, check this shit out. You got this little nigga Sparky is fucking her. You falling in love with him? So Kirk came up and like Sparky is, man. When the last time you fuck? You be fucking fuzzy. I said, yeah, I be fucking fuzzy. I fuck fuzzy like yesterday. That's my bitch. Right. What it do? It's your man Lonnie. Come on. Get it? And we back with another reaction video, part two reaction video. Okay. A lot of my hitters, man. Y'all was really messing with the big head Gary Alpo joint. How Alpo ratted. You know what I'm saying? A lot of mix up in the comments on my last video. Uh, good conversation, good uh, build, good dialect. Whether you agree or not, it's always cool to express your opinions. Um, this is a must anticipated uh, reaction uh, video. This is actually the part two of that video. This one's called The Murder of Big Head Gary and the Rise of Rob Cobb and the Trinidad Boys. Excuse me, Roy Cobb and the Trinidad Boys. As we know, uh, Trinidad, Northeast Hood, and Washington, D.C. I explained y'all in the last video. Uh, my father is from Washington, D.C. That's how I have my ties and my family to Washington, D.C. Um, he's from around Greenway Apartments. That's near on Minnesota Avenue. That's Southeast. And like I told you, my mother's from Southern Virginia. You know what I'm saying? How they met, that's a story time for a different day. You know what I'm saying? But um, that's where we at with it, man. I don't want to hold y'all up, man. We already know what popped last video, so let's get to the story, man. Let's get it, man. That same fight immediately went down the corner. Gary coming up in the 300 stealth. They just came out with twin turbo. He seen his flag is down, buck the you. Dre pulled over. Gary pulled over. They get to talk. I had my gun in my lap, though. Dre and Gary was talking. I laid in neutral. Let them talk like they're supposed to. Oh, no. Big A Gary gave this nigga a signal or something to get out the car. So one nigga got out of the car. There was only one nigga in the car. One girl. He got out of the car. So I jumped out of the car with my strap in my hand. Once again, my nigga Dre, get back in the car. Why you pull a gun out? I'm like, man, come on, start this shit, nigga. So Big Ed Gary was telling Dre, man, you don't be putting no guns out on nobody, man. Get your little man. I'm telling Dre, why your man get out of the car? Tell your man, Gary, to get back in the car. I'm going to get back in the car. So we went on for like a couple of minutes, a couple of seconds. It seemed like it was a long time, but it wasn't. So Gary ordered this little man to get back in the car. So I got back in the car with my strap. So they talked for a couple more minutes. All I seen was them sh shake hands. So we got in the car. I said, what that shit was about? I said, man, he was crying to me about Caprice fucking this bitch. He come home every night telling this bitch how much he liked Dre, how much he looked up to Dre. If something happened to him, he wouldn't mind her fucking with a nigga like Dre. If not Dre. Turn around with Dre fucking this bitch. So basically, he asked Dre to stop fucking this bitch. They apologized. He said apologized for saying fuck Dre and this, that, and that. So they shook hands on it, and that was it. So I'm telling Dre, you gonna, you gonna stop fucking He was like, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I said, you gotta fuck this bitch one last time. Sorry for pausing the video and stopping the video. Shout out to my man Sparkies, man. I had to get my man out the way. Uh, uh, first of all, the, the interview is given by Gully TV. Okay, Gully TV is the one who's giving the interview. But the man being interviewed with the no saying Jive Fly Jump on, you know what I'm saying? The little turtleneck jump, you hear me? That's Spark Ease, man. Y'all show that man some respect, you hear me? Back to the video. Last time, that was it. And the bitch was like a stalk on my nigga. We had to change the cell phone in the car, the beep was and everything. So she trying to say we scared of Gary. That's why Dre don't want to fuck him. Dre was like, not gave the man my word. I'm not fucking with him anymore. So out of some hatred shit, Caprice told, started a rumor that she was pregnant by Dre, which was false. Okay. From that point on, some murder shit now. That's when the murder shit started coming. So um, he came to poke crime. Man, he's still fucking my bitch. I think he gave him his word. I want to see the nigga. So Gary went to Poe and told him, your man Andre fucking with my he's brother. He's still fucking with I think he gave him his word saying he wasn't. Right. So Poe was like, I'm going to talk to him. 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 So 
um, time going, our Colombian plug went back to Colombia. Uh -huh. So Dre was like, the nigga Alpo, the rat beat me. He wanted rat beat me. That's what his name, I call him nickname, right. Alpo the rat. So Alpo the rat beat me. I'm like, well, fuck it, what you gonna do? There's too much shit going on about them niggas. Fuck them. Dre's like, it's our last time going back. We about to move out of Cali and try to do this rap shit. We had a house and everything. Dre had an Andre promotion production. So we about to roll. Dre like, it's our last time going back. And take this extra little money for extra spending. Right. I ain't know who put a trick at the time, but I know Poe set it up. So I wasn't went with Dre, but he left me. Right. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people think me and Dre be together so much. I had something to do with it. Why I went with him at this time? I said, if they left me, what can I do? Right. So they actually uh, was leery of you because you weren't around when that happened to him? That's why me and Dre stay together. We don't see. You see Dre, you see me, you see me, you see Dre. Besides, when I go off at night to get some, some solo pussy. Alpo was charged with, like, I think, he played. They was about to like take their money because they was making big was money and put it in some money. rap and go to Cali. The, that girl or somebody. One thing about that music game, but you got that bread, you going to push. Sparky's might have been, the, might have been but, top, you um, know what I'm saying, dog right now in the rap game. It's crazy. My man in D.C. Putting D.C. on. It came a thing with him where he was, uh... You know, he was a short kind of guy. He was about 5'1", five, 5'2", five, real slim in the body, and a real big head. Okay. But he was getting money, though. People didn't know he was getting money. At that time, he was probably holding about a million, two million, and people didn't know that he was holding like that. He was getting it. And uh, he had a real short man complex. Okay. Okay, and uh, like I said, we wasn't just business. We wasn't just business partners. We was... I knew a lot of his business. I knew his family. He knew my family in D.C. and in New York. You know, so I knew his son's mother. Rich. I knew where he so laid his rich. head. He knew where I laid my yeah. head sometimes. You know, I knew some of his stashes. He knew some of my stashes. We became real close. So, and he was also the one with me with Rich. Okay. So we had a lot of secrets on one another. And um, he became, he had the short man comments, and he became, he started to become real jealous with me as far as through the people because the people used to since I was Alpo people used to see him with me all the time and think he was working for me right because not until he not until I came to DC really he started coming out with like Benzes and all because he seen what I was doing so he started busting out with little Benzes and all that type of 300 coupes and all that right and I always had the reputation if if you let me your car Antoine automatically that was my car Right. That was my car, and then if they seen you with it, like, oh yeah, he driving a car. So, time went on, one day me and him and one of his workers were sitting at a table at a restaurant having a sandwich, mm -hmm. and uh, he called my wife a bitch. He called my wife a bitch, because he was like, man, you still with that crazy bitch? And I just looked over at him, and I could have took it a little better if it was just me and him, but his one of his workers was there, right. and I kind of like gave him that look like, yo, you really disrespected me right now. and So he seen her. She was coming to look for me down Southwest because she knew I hung out down there. So the kid, Gary seen her, he was like, yo, there go that bitch. Look at that bitch. Who she looking for? She must be looking for Poe. And my man Wayne heard him say this. And he beat me. He beat me later. He was like, yo, Gary was down here talking trash about you and uh, he disrespected your wife. I was going to kill him right there, but I said, let me get with you first. Because I was like, no, I still got love for the kid. No, he's, just, he's just frustrated right now. And we had a lot of secrets on one another. And I always told them before this happened, I said, you know, we know so much about one another that if we was to ever get into any type of confusion or anything, one of us would have to leave. And I'm definitely not going back to New York because I'm getting money. <laughs> so the only thing else is one of us will have to die. He was like, yeah, I feel you. Because we knew a lot about one another. So now... I got this deal coming up with this this connect like yo this big this this crazy big deal like yo they want me to put up like I had to put up like maybe about two million they was gonna hit me with like probably about I say anywhere from like six million dollars worth of coke in New York. Produced you hear me? Yeah, yeah, it was like about six million dollars. So they wanted me to put up like 
$2 million, and I owe four. Okay. Right? So I had like 1.5. I put up like 1.5, and I was just telling my little man for him to just put up a half a mil. Okay. I was able to put up the whole, I could have put up the whole $2 million at that time. Okay. This would have just set us on the map for, and it was at, it was at like 11000 a key, 10000 a key. Mm. I could have came to D.C. and got nine, nineteen thousand. 19000 to the dudes who I didn't really like and the dudes who I was real cool with, I could have got 17, you know? Mm-hmm. That was like $6,000, $8,000 profit. So before this goes about, he, uh, his anger is really building up with me and all that. He's not really, he's not really feeling me like that anymore. And we really had stopped hanging out, you know, but I didn't really pay no attention to it. I'm saying I still got love for this kid and all that. So he tells somebody down in Lawton Prison about this deal. He told somebody that he was cool with down there. Only thing he didn't know that same person that he's telling, they know my man, Wayne. Mm-hmm. My man Wayne, he get to me, say, yo, you about to put a deal together in New York for this, 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 that, and it's gonna put that. I said, what the hell? I said, how you know? He said, well, man, my man called me down from law, and he said, Gary told him that, yo, that you want to put this deal together, and it ain't gonna, gonna go, you know, he gonna wind up doing you in the process. Just how much anger he built up for me. So I said, oh, yeah. So my man was like, yo, let's go. I said, no, we got to do this right now. Can't just be running up on Gary in broad daylight. That's going to come back to us. So we got to do this right, and we got to get him where nobody know. So so my, my little man Gary, he had a little beef with somebody, and, and they tried to, they just, like, maybe like a month earlier, they tried to kill him. And uh, so uh, so he beats me one night and said, yo, kid, kid, one of the kids name was Jawbreaker out of D.C., the kid named Jawbreaker. He said, yo. Yeah, I know where Joe breaking them at. This is Gary talking to us on the phone. Like, yo, I know where the kid Joe breaking them at. They had such and such, such and such. I said, oh, yeah. I, we, so I'm talking to him on the phone. I said, who you with? He said, yo, I'm by myself. I said, you, you got something? He said, yeah, I got, I, got me, uh, I got two pistols with me now. I said, all right. I was, I was with my man Wayne and, like, two other dudes that were under my man Wayne. So that was our perfect opportunity. My man Wayne was like, yo, this is it. Make it happen. Productions. So we go, we and my, we and, uh, we jump in this kid MPV van, because we used to like use an MPV van because they had the little side compartments. We could throw the pistols in there if the police pull us over okay. real quick. So we jump in the MPV van, so I'm driving, because I was, since I was like the best driver, so, so we go meet the kid Gary, because this is a perfect opportunity. Don't nobody know he's with us now. And, and when he come up missing, we can always be like, man, you know, I knew how to deny it quick. Okay. So we go get him. Boom. So we go get him. He gets into the MPV van. He parks his car, whatever. He parks his truck. He had the truck at the time. He parks his truck. I met him on, uh, what's that, uh, Florida Avenue. I go meet him on Florida Avenue. Florida Avenue by a, uh, a Wendy's, I think it was. Okay. We get a little revolver out mm-hmm. of the, out the stash, and I give it to the dudes that's sitting in back of my man Gary. So the man Gary, he's in the middle, but he don't know that. We don't slip the revolver to the back to the kid who's gonna hit him in the head. Mm-hmm. We ran for about five, ten minutes after we get the gas. Bang! My man hit him. I give the signal through the rear view mirror. My man hit him with the revolver, two in the head. All you hear is ugh. From Trinidad, what was your like? What was your interactions like with Wayne Perry? Actually, I had interaction with WP probably indirectly. He sent me messages, some old fake extortion messages. Like one day, my man Duval Hux called me and was like, "Man, Wayne said we put some money on his head. He wanted to come see him over the jail." So I'm telling this nigga that's extortion move. So I guess the bitch Twala was with him. He sent the bitch to water to send a message. So I said, man, being though, where I'm from, and DC jail ain't that far, probably five minutes. I got in my twin, Turbo Z, I shot up the jail. So I'm telling Duval, that's a store shoot, I'm going in and see that nigga. Fuck that nigga. So to Walla gonna tell me, do you really want me to tell him that? I said, yeah, bitch, tell him that. Fuck. 
So she like, oh, I bet. She went into jail, me and Duval rolled out. Right. And WP came home after that. So all you niggas jumping on my line, on my page, on the internet bullshit, talking this WP, I ain't say this WP, I wanna get no money like this with Poe. Before you dick ride and jump on my page with that bullshit, you bitch niggas, go call them niggas and ask them. Pope, I'll put a red home, WP washed up, but you can get in touch with that nigga. He 88. So before you get on my page with that bullshit, go do your homework, you little bitch ass niggas. Damn. I mean, partner. Columbus damn. Partner. That's what I'm saying. You know, me and Nut grew up together. We was doing the soda machines together back then. The man Dre, he started out hanging with us. Breaking the soda machines, stealing. So I think Nut got caught stealing one day. So Roy from Trinidad went and got him out. So Roy telling Nut, fuck that stealing shit. So when he put Nut on, you carry the pistol and collect the money up Northwest. From the dope shit, that's all you gotta do. Right. So that's what Nut was doing. From that point on, Nut was hustling. We was still stealing. We weren't even hustling back then, I don't think. Yeah. Nut was only even hustling out our crew back then. He ended up catching like almost a life sentence at like 18, 19 years old. Your yeah, nut probably like four years older than me too. Okay. I was the youngest and the littlest out of all of them. Your nut caught a body down the chapter. That's when he got life for it. But back if you're you under the old act, life is 25 years. You do 25 years, you go up to parole. Okay, okay. The night that um I gather from you know watching documentaries and doing research. The night that uh, Nut caught his case, it was an issue with somebody in Rayful, right? Yeah. Was you out there that night? I was out there on the chapter that night. Could you elaborate what that shit was about? Uh, right. How did that shit spin out of control to end up uh, somebody losing their life? Okay, so um, basically, Nut actually grew up in Trinidad and was to be Roy little foot soldier. He cut Roy y'all and started fucking with Nut. But at the same token, Nut still come around Trinidad to hang out, cause that's his hood. So, um, so Big Ed Brandon, which was Roy Hitman at the time back then, they putting the bite on Ray for the rep, leaning on. So the Trinidad guys was leaning on Ray for. Yeah, they was probably leaning on everybody for real, but yeah, Ray for two. These particular guys was leaning on everybody. Yeah, you got some money doing something. Yeah. Who was these? Who was these niggas? Um, Trinidad niggas. I don't want, they still out there. I was informed that they don't want their names because they left their life alone. No so they don't call their names. I know them. I see them. 80s, I them. 80s Trinidad niggas. That's right. Eighty Trinidad. Not the new niggas. 80 Trinidad. That's right. All right. Right. So, um, Brandon leaning on Ray the rep. Hmm. Ray get scared, put nut on him. Gave nut, like, think, I think five bricks to get Brandon. So Nut went around Trinidad, gave him the five bricks. See me when you see me, do you? Probably three months went past. They seen Ray again. Give me Brandon, give me some shit, nigga. I gave you some shit. That's a Ray teller, Ray for the rat teller. Brandon, you ain't give me shit. The shit Nut gave you came from me. So Brandon, like, man, fuck that shit. You got all that shit. Nigga. Give me some more of that shit. That shit gone. So Ray would have told Nut. So the Ray told Nut, Ray was in his feelings. Right. No, Nut was in his feelings. So the particular night down the chapter, you had Ray and all his guys, you had the Trinidad, Roy and all the Trinidad niggas. So they changed words out before they went in the chapter. Ray and them went in the chapter. So Nut came up so like, these bitch ass niggas, I'm gonna smash these niggas. He was telling my nigga Dre that and me. So um, time went on that night. When, when Ray came out the chapter, Roy pulled Ray up and was talking to Roy. Roy pulled Ray for the Red up and was talking to Ray for the Red, leaning on this, that, and that. So Brandon came up and was like, man, what's up, man? Man, give me some of that shit, this, that, and that, wah, 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 wah. So when Brandon came up, Nut came up to watch Ray back. Mm -hmm. Brandon would say some shit like, man, chill out, Nut. You ain't got to do with this little Nut, man. Chill out. Nut took off, got his gun, bam, smashed. No rap. No rap. And I think when when Nut was shooting him, he tried to push Michael Frey in front of him. So I don't know if the bullet grazed Michael Frey or almost hit him. So the night that Nut caught his case, he might have grazed Frey too. Right, or, or almost. So 
he smashed Brandon that night. A lot of shooting and killing was going on within that moment down the chop. Right. A couple of bitches got hit, paralyzed, niggas got slumped from both sides, ATC, and nothing went in on that. I think the bitch named Maddie told on was a witness. So he took a cop to light, he did 25 at home now. No doubt. Um, in a previous conversation we had, you, you were saying that Rafe, um, Wayne didn't, he didn't run around tormenting everybody. He had his picks in D.C. Yeah. It's like this, like, I be telling my, but a little youngest jump on my page talking about niggas scared of WP. We were scared of WP. Everybody says that if you're from outside of D.C., your perception is that he ran wild doing whatever he wanted to do to anybody in D.C. Yeah. He was doing what he supposed to do, but he, he wasn't doing that shit to everybody. That's false. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, when the murder rate, when the murder rate was, when, when, these, when Death City was number one murder rate, who was this WP? This nigga wasn't heard of, he wasn't getting no money, he wasn't fucking no bitches, he wasn't dressing. What the nigga was doing? It was a lot of killers out. I wasn't killing back then. I was trying, but my nigga was holding me back. So, who was this nigga? If you, you ask anybody out our earth, when the murder rate was number one, his name was nowhere to be mentioned or found. Later on, he did what he did. I ain't taking that away from the dude. He laid his murder game down afterwards or whatever. I'm not taking nothing from him. But all that, he was doing shit to everybody, bullshit. So what's the, um, how did the issue arise between, you know, they, they, it's a reputed issue or some acrimony between guys from D.C. and New York? Ooh, basically, um, I mean, you even said it yourself. It was the Back time then, when, it was when, when people was, was, people was killing. We was fucking with him again. I guess the D.C. niggas like, man, fuck these New York niggas gonna send them back home and take this shit and rob them. So D.C. and New York got the beef in heaven. The good New York dudes stayed because they showed love and was fair. Right. Oh, so that didn't apply to everybody? No. No doubt. That didn't apply to everybody. You know what I'm saying? So, and that was it. So I guess from that mentality, the D.C. motherfuckers didn't like New York dudes. New York dudes didn't like D.C. niggas. But if you was a man and you was on some other shit you'll understand if it's just a simple motherfucker to say, I don't like a New York nigga. I don't like a DC nigga. <clears throat> were, were, you on, were you on the street when they came and got uh, Alpo and them? Actually, I was in. You was inside? I was inside. I did a, I was doing four and a half months for that shit. I got locked up in the house with all that money and shit. So I was actually doing four and a half months in the county for that shit when they grabbed them. And that's when Alpo the rent try to tell the feds I killed Big Ed Girl. You know what I'm saying? Cause the next night he told me, the same night he told me in the club, in the Metro Club, I went to try to hit Big Ed Girl the next day. Right. But I, I fucked up and got away. We fucked up. My, he and my nigga, he turned rat. Chico turned rat. He fucked up, he got away. So, so I'll put a rat trying to blame that body on me. They were trying to indict me for that shit while I was in. Shorty Pop, um, Sheldon, Sheldon Watkins from the Junkyard Band. Talk about him. I know of Pop. I heard about him, what he was doing. I Maybe mean, had an encounter one time, or maybe twice, when he say that. You know what I'm saying? The first time, I was out of pocket because they was beefing with some Southeast niggas around East Cape that was hustling on our block right. that we was giving work to. So I'm trying to squash it. So, I ain't no pop. I know the 18th and D niggas that we grew up together. So I'm telling them, woo 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 woo. Anyway, the fight this broke out wild. So, once pop found out who I was, like, who is this nigga? Everybody knows about this. We grew up together. That's what 18 niggas, 18 and D niggas, my told him. So he came around out of my nigga tank. Mm -hmm. So Dre gonna get mad at me because I'm trying to be a peacemaker. He said, man, you ain't got nothing to do with that shit, nigga. Stay that shit. Y'all went to school together back in the day. Stay out of that shit. You and 18 dudes, stay out of that shit. So I'm like, I was mad at Dre, but he was right. So that's where, uh, that's where little pop was from, 18? Pop from Southeast. Southeast. He from Southeast. Okay. He from Southeast. It was, it's been said that he's the, um, the person who introduced Al Paul and Wayne Perry. Yeah, that's the rumor because WP, Wayne Perry, say this is if 
He got some homies to get money. I ain't gonna say their name, but they still out there. They know what it is. People know what it is. You don't do shit like this to niggas that got your back. Niggas that get them out of jail. When you get out of jail, he go check their pockets. He go check their pockets and take their shit from them. He's the same nigga got you out of jail. You don't do shit like that to niggas that got your back. So when he got locked up last time, everybody said fuck him and left him in jail. Couldn't even make a bomb. Because he did shit to niggas that fucked him with. You don't do shit like that niggas you fuck That's why his ass stayed in that jail. See, he ain't, niggas don't tell a whole story. He ain't stay in jail because niggas was scared of him. That was a part of it. Yeah. But the niggas he fuck with ain't get him out because you leaning on these niggas, taking their shit and they getting you out. So when you get locked up again, niggas stay your ass in jail. So that's when Pop told our Porter Rat he got a good man in jail. So WP feel that he was obligated to be loyal to Pope on the strength of that. He was shot out there, I can't recall what year. Were you on the streets? When yeah, Alpo was well, shot I uh, during a, what was a, a kidnapping or a robbery attempt. Yeah, I already got shot like twice, but one incident I know of when we was fucking with Alpo the Rep. We went to the center of the Washington Hospital Center. He called us, because we came to Washington Hospital Center. We probably got, he had a bag, probably like three to five bricks on it. We grabbed that. We was like, man, what the fuck happened? He was like, some fifth and old niggas try to do this, and they shot me in the back. So I'm like, we like, cool, all right, we got the shit from him. He said, we're gonna be all right, though. And we rolled out. I know the, I know the fifth and old niggas who did it, you know what I'm saying? And that, that particular point, Poe tried to put Wayne on the fifth and old niggas. Yeah. They weren't going for that shit. So WP, I heard calling them, that's my son in there. He ain't bringing two of the niggas to shoot. Oh, so the, uh, the situation with Al Poe. He ain't straight got shot. Shit. Nobody died about that. No. Well, no more said about that shit. Even I heard the Trinidad nigga shot him. Nothing ain't happened about him. Yeah. So all that shit about he was man, he was doing this, he that. Niggas weren't scared of that nigga. Because obviously people were still trying to get out of him. Was trying to still get out of uh, <laughs> out there. Yeah, for sure. Boy he still was leaning on Pope. He was fucking with them. Oh, the guy Roy was at Alpo ass too? He wasn't yeah. just on Rave for he was No, like yeah, he had words with Poe. Actually, when Poe came to see us around 16. What's this guy named? Uh, Roy. Roy. He got killed, yeah, Roy. Roy Cobbs. Roy Cobbs. He was running Trinidad on that Martello side, far as anything moved, he went in. He's an older guy? He, oh, he older than me, way older OG. than me. OG? Yeah. If anything been sold on Trinidad, he went in. So he was, he, he was, he was just, he, he was out there stepping in the Rave for and Alpo. Yeah. It was niggas like that on the prowl in D.C. in the 80s, man. Yeah, a lot of them. Not just them, a lot of them. So, I ain't never having none of them niggas. But he was supposed to be protecting them. I'll pull the rep. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it is what it is. Um, you spent time, obviously, in the federal system. Yeah. With a D.C. number or whatever. You was in the D.C. car. When Wayne was on the streets, Wayne, Wayne, uh, Wayne was protecting a guy from New York. You could say, you know, whatever. He, he was putting in work for a guy from New York. When well, Wayne is in the institutional system, how does the the body of uh, Washington, D.C.'s convicts, convicts feel about him? I, I mean, some people from D.C. lost family members at the hands of Wayne, right? Yeah, but at the same time, we have people that lost family members to be mad at him for taking up for a New York dude. You know what I'm saying? But if you understand the game and that dude got you out, Nobody else will get y'all because they fucked up shit you was doing to your homies. You can be loyal to them, but that same token, you can't be no flunky. So I think, for real, for real, if you got a dude just getting all this money and you're doing this hits for him, you're supposed to be caked up. Ain't no way you supposed to be still going on moves. Yeah. Trying to take niggas half a brick money and all that old shit. Popo's been paying like he wait. Right. Which he wasn't. Even he said, I don't let the nigga know what I was getting or nothing. So basically, he was fucking WP to me. If he was still on the prowl shaking niggas down. Why he... you gotta do that? You got this nigga getting all this money. Right. You supposed to be enjoying your life, fucking bitches, whatever car you want, just protecting that nigga. My right. thoughts. That my makes a lot, That makes a lot of motherfucking sense. A lot of good sense. No doubt. I always wanted to ask um, that to a guy from D.C. I got a question that I have to ask. I heard that. Anybody that I've encountered that 
that came home from the federal system told me that the Washington DC Washington DC inmates do all the rape, robbery, and murder in the federal system. That's true to a degree. If you Google it online, I think we the DC niggas is most hated. Even the COs don't like DC niggas. But McClendon's rape and robbery shit up. Yeah, the the, 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 the the sex thing. Please clean that up. Yeah, I'm, 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 because yeah, this, is, this, is, this is civilized. This is civilized as a, as a motherfucker. Y'all have a name. I'm here. When dudes come back from the system, yeah, they, they talk about y'all knife work. Yeah. They'll cut you, they'll cut you, they'll stab you, yeah. everything. That same, yeah. But then they start talking about the boys. The homosexual shit. Yeah. yeah. So what's yeah. up with Why is that pronounced? Somebody told me that it came from Lord. That's yeah. what I was told. But go ahead. Okay, that's, that might be some truth, because actually I think about it. Norton with all the DC dudes do their time, man. But it was so fucked up down Lord, so many bodies, so many CEOs corrupt, they closed Norton and started shipping everybody to the feds. So everybody think DC is federal. As federal is though, you get federal cases, you don't. DC still have state, state court. Right. So if you get locked up in DC, you might do a state charge, you just go on to the feds to do your time because DC don't have no more jails. Okay. So DC niggas and the feds got two different numbers. One is a state number, one is a federal number. So every DC inmate has two numbers when he going through the D through the federal. No, it system. depends on what court you come through. When you come through the regular court, you got a certain number. I think it's 007 or 016. Right. If you got a DC number, you got triple O or some other number. They got two numbers though. They got like four numbers actually. Right. So if you state, you got a one number. If you come through the feds, you got another number. But everybody been housed in the feds to do their time. Okay. The, the sex robbery thing. Sex like. robbery thing. A lot of people get in, a lot of our homies get into, get into it with dudes in the jail. And I tell everybody this. And I be keeping, I try to keep it a hundred, keep it a real sports, this is my shit. So I try to keep it real and hundred at all times. Yep, yep. So, um, I look, I tell anybody this. If you take, group of California dudes from um, Sing Sing or whatever and shut all the California jails down and put the niggas in the feds they gonna do the same shit ain't no way you gonna tell me Rockets Island up New York and all them jails up there it ain't no New York or California Texas dudes that's fucking boys oh no, nah, I'm, a, I'm a convict I've served time that's it's, it's sex in all prisons but I was trying to figure out how did I think maybe it was some brutality underlying, maybe a gang rape, maybe the the body, the way the way the the, the, um, the Washington D.C. inmates move, maybe right. that could attribute to the reputation. When one move, five moves. Right. You dig what I'm saying? So. Yeah. So like I say, like I, I ain't, I'm not trying to camouflage the homosexuality, the rape, and the robbery, but everybody do it. You can't tell me that New York prisons, California prisons, Texas. Ain't none of your homies in there fucking boys who getting fucked. If you, if you, if you bleed that, get the fuck out of here. Um, hey, we got more of it. Damn, to be continued. A lot of clarifications on that. Um, Trinidad, well known, even in my generation, a well known hood in DC. Like I said, I'm, I'm from PG County, Merlin, man. I'm a generation of the generation, you know what I'm saying? So a lot of us, man, put it this way. A lot of a lot of people that were who had family, whose mothers, fathers are from DC, a lot of us live in Prince George's County. We're spread out around the county. Don't get it twisted. It's still some people my age that's in the city, you know what I'm saying, heavy, but they're gentrifying it now. And a lot of our roots in PG County come from Washington, DC. You know what I'm saying? Even though DC streets and PG streets are, are kind of different. It has its differences, but you got people in DC who got family in PG. You got people in PG who got family in DC. You can't, you can't deny it. we're right here. We're right here. You know what I'm saying? As far as the jail thing, I've heard that too, man. Especially out of state, man. They try to say, y'all DC niggas go hard. DC niggas go hard in the jail. Y'all, y'all, y'all don't play. Y'all don't go for nothing. But they be raping niggas. I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a criminal. I'm not a convicted felon. I couldn't tell you. I heard it though, but I couldn't tell you. Um, 
far as that, I mean, I guess I don't I don't know about jail, but from what I've studied and researched, I guess that whole shit, the gang rape thing, the rape thing, boys, sex, whatever in jail. It's a jail culture. I'm pretty sure you got niggas in San Quentin raping niggas. I'm pretty sure you got niggas in Rikers Island, like you said, raping niggas. Don't just try to make that a DC thing. I guess it's just because we, our city is so territorial. We're so together. When we in the city, when we in the county, we might beef amongst each other. When we go out, we one nation. So it's like we move all together. Cause you know what I'm saying. Everybody against us. People hate DC people. People real. Don't really like DMV people. They say real arrogant, real cocky. But um, like I said, I don't know nothing. I've never been in jail, but I've, I've heard it too. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, that's pretty wild. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, yeah, man. Uh, I'm ready for the next part too, man. Shout out to Edge to Christ, man. You big. Shout out to Gully TV. We in the building. Yitty. Anyway, follow me, man. Uh, 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 Instagram, Lonnie Cabal. Yitty. Snapchat, Lonnie Cabal, you dig? <laughs> Twitter at Fire Survivor. Um, Facebook at Cabal TV, Live is group, chat, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And for my other platforms that isn't YouTube, um, YouTube, Lonnie Cabal, you dig? So for that being said, be on the lookout. I got some more, I got some more material coming. Of course, we're gonna continue this. Y'all keep rocking with your boy, and we out. You dig?